Hey guys, welcome to Nigra Techies. This is our ASP.NET Core tutorial version is 6.0. So part of this video, I am going to explain authentication in .NET Core Web PP. In my previous video, I just explained this basic authentication and how to implement this basic authentication in our application. The similar way, I am going to explain this JWT authentication. First, we can talk about what is JWT authentication. This JWT stands for JSON Web Tokens. So this is a open standard to pass data between client and server and enables you to transmit the data back and forth between the server and consumers in the secure manner. So here the concept is very simple. First we are going to create a web token. For creating the token we need one security key that we can hard code in our application. And the second thing is we have the claim information. So whenever the user trying to create a token, they will send in credentials. So we can validate against our databases. After that, we can get our unique information that we supposed to include in our client side. And the final one is expiration time. Actually, we can provide the custom expiration time. So when we are generating the token, we can provide the expiration time also. So once we created our token, uh, we have to return from our function. This is all about the generating the token. So the second part is validating token. If you are trying to access any of the secured API, you have to pass this authorization header. In this authorization header, you have to include this, the token and also the prefix, you have to include the barrier keyword. So the system will validate our token. It will check whether it's valid or not, whether it is expired or not. So if everything is fine, it allows us to access the particular service. This is all about the concept. I have listed out all the steps. We can go one by one. So first we have to enable this authentication, adding this use authentications. We are supposed to do in our program.cs file. So if you noted here, it's already we did. Okay. And the second thing is uh, we have to create one method for generating the token. So now let me create one more controller here. So the my controller name is user controller. Okay, it's done. Uh, I'm going to add these namespaces and let me classes. So let me copy everything from here. And as I mentioned, uh, my controller name is user. What it's saying this already the definition is contains. So let me resolve it. Control shift P. Okay, the issue got resolved. And also this author is also not required because uh, this controller is for public. So inside that I am going to create one function. Public. Task because I am going to use an asynchronous programming. I action result and the method name is authenticate. And this is the one of the post method. So initially I'm going to return as OK. Okay, this is done. The next step is uh, we have an input parameter. So username and password. So for that I am going to create one class here. User credentials. So basically it requires two parameters. One is username. And the next one is password. Okay. 
okay control shift p okay it's fine so now let me go to the user controller here I am going to use this form body and our input class is user credential so now we have the credentials so our first step is we have to check against this database if it is valid we have to allow for next level in case it's not valid we have to return as the unauthorized so already I am have a database context so let me inject here so I am going to create on one public constructor private read only my database my database context name is uh, land db context so let me set the value here this dot okay we have done it and here I am going to declare one variable is called user as I mentioned it's a asynchronous programming I am going to use this await then this dot underscore db context add my table name is table user here I am going to check whether the credentials are available or not first are default asynchronous so user id double equal to user cred dot username and the same way we have to check the password also okay we have done it now i am going to check whether it has any data or not if there is no data as I mentioned I am going to return as the unauthorized okay fine so our next step is we need a security key so the key we have to define in our app settings in the app settings I am going to create one more new section JWT settings In the settings, I am going to define one variable is called security key. Add key, you can give your own key. This is for the testing purpose. I am just giving like a this is our secure. okay we have done it now our next step is we need to access this section so for that I am going to create one class first here the naming convention is very important one public class and it has only one parameter the parameter is nothing but security key public string so here also it's saying it's already available it's a kind of the c-sharp extension issue so resolving this one you have to press control shift to p then you have to type like a omni sharp or restart omni sharp okay it's resolved okay fine our next step is we have to configure this value in the services then only we can inject any of the controller so let me do this one also bar jwt settings equal to so builder dot configuration dot get section here we need to provide the section name 
so section name is nothing but this GWT settings and now we have to configure it JWT settings of is supposed to pass this content here that's it so once we configured we can inject in the controller and we can get the security key value for accessing this content, we have an I options interface. This I options interface belongs to Microsoft extension data options. So let me include it. Okay, this is done. And now I am going to inject this JWT settings in our controller. private read only JWT settings again this JWT settings and here as I mentioned I am going to use in this I options okay finally we have to set the value this dot JWT settings equal to options dot value So now we have our security key and also we have an, the claim information. So using that uh, we can generate our token. Generate token. Bar token handler. First we need to initialize this handler. So for initializing this uh, token handler we have to include some namespaces. So let me do first using Microsoft identity model dot token and also one more namespace is system dot identity model tokens dot JWT. These are the two namespaces we supposed to use here. So after that we have to use the classes JWT security token handler. So fine we have to initialize our handler. The second step is the token key. So the token key is nothing but our security key only but we need to convert into byte format. So for doing this conversion we have the namespaces system.txt. So let me include it. So here encoding dot utf8 get bytes. So here let me pass our security key. So the security key is available in the JWT settings dot security key. Okay the final one is token descriptor. called a new security token descriptor and it has three parameters the first one is subject so in the subject basically uh, we have to include our climb details so new climb identity so this climb identity is belongs to system.security.climb so let me include in the top of that So as I mentioned here we going to include this climb information new climb of so the climb type is name and the value is uh, we have to give any of the unique value it could be a user ID or username or else we can give the email ID also 
So I am going to give this a username only. So user slash user ID. Okay, that's it. Let me format it. So the next one is expiration time. So I'm going to just to 20 seconds. Data dot now dot add seconds of 20. The final one is signing credentials. So new signing credentials of so it requires two parameters one is security key and another one is algorithm so new symmetric key we need to pass in the byte format so already we have the token key so let me pass it here and the next one is algorithm so security algorithm is we have the different options so i am going to use this hmc sha 256 okay we have done it so again let me format it so now we have our token descriptor so using this information we can generate our token so var token equal to token handler has one method create token using that we can generate our token so it requires the security token descriptor only that's what we already defined so let me pause it here and our final token it's in the string format only again I'm going to use this token handler it has one more method is called write token so here we can pass this token that's it so our generated token will be available here so let me return it so now we have completed our first part generating our the token so let me verify this one So I'm just refreshing. Yeah, this is actually our controller. So the URL is user slash authenticate. So it requires the two inputs. One is the username. My username is admin user. And password is password is admin. See now it's returning the token. In case if I'm providing some invalid records I mean the credentials so it's returning this 401 error so actually I want to check the actual token so let me take it once again okay so this is my generated token so basically we can verify this token for extracting so for doing the extraction we have one site is called jwt.io just to open this first link okay sample token sting sample token was there so let me remove it i am going to include my token so basically the token has three sections so if you clearly noted they have included one dot so here also you can see the two dots was there and the first dot i mean the first section is nothing but the header information so the algorithm we use the hs256 and this is the jwt token the second section is the second one is the payload the payload is nothing but our user information we just included the name in the client side so the, i mean my username so that's what they are and the second one is token expiration time and the final one is token issued at i mean the token creation time so here also saying uh, when actually the token gets expired the same information only the final one is verify signature basically we have provided one security key that information is available in the final section so the signature is verified this is my key so whatever value i am providing here automatically this section continuously is varying so this is all about the jwt token extraction 
so now let me move on the final step we have to validate our token okay so for doing this one I am just going to this program.cs file so in the program.cs file I am already enabled this basic authentication so let me command it so this is for basic authentication the same way we are going to enable for our JWT authentication also the steps are almost similar but some difference was there again we have to use this add authentication only so first we have to include this default authentication scheme and also we need to install one package I actually forget that so let me install it so control shift P I'm going to choose this package manager add packages so see here the new get package manager window is opened here just to type like a JWT and then you have to choose this microsoft.asp netcore authentication dot JWT barrier and the version is 6.06 .06. Okay, see, so it's added and we need to restore it. So basically, this C sharp extension will provide the option for the restoring. In case it's not coming, you have to type the command is .NET restore. So, okay, the package restore has been completed. Now I have to include this namespace. So, using Microsoft. Dot ASP Netcore authentication JWT barrier and also we need to include two more namespaces one is for Microsoft identity model dot tokens and also another one is system dot identity model tokens dot JWT okay we have done it so here the value is JWT barrier defaults dot authentication scheme the same way we have one more thing default challenging scheme equal to again the value is same okay this is done and our second step is we have to add JWT barrier so we have the method is called add JWT barrier here the first step is request HTTPS metadata equal to true and the second one is save token equal to true and the final one is token validation parameters so here new token validation parameters here the first step is validate issuer signing key equal to true and the second one is signing key issuer signing key equal to so the key already we have included in our app settings.json so we need to access it so authentication key is equal to so builder dot configuration dot get get value the type is string so the value is available in the format of first JWT settings so inside we have a security key 
so let me copy the things so after that the security key okay we got it and we have to convert into the so the format of bytes so we have to include the name species system dot text so again the procedure is same encoding dot utf08 get bytes symmetric security key so this is a very important thing other than that we have to include validate issuer it's not required and also validate audience okay we cannot give this semicolon validate add-ins also it's a false so let me format it okay we have done our changes now we can verify it so control C again I need to run the application dot net run okay let me refresh the swagger side so I am trying to access this uh, product function so here actually I am getting this uh, 401 error only because this is the secured service so let me copy the URL and now I am opening this uh, postman so here I am going to open one new tab and my method is the get method only here I am going to include this URL and this header side I am going to add this authorization header and a token is the barrier token so bearer so finally we have to provide our secured token value so let me generate the token once again Okay, we added so let me try it okay see now we got our value this is all about the JWT authentication hope you got the better idea about how to generate one token and how to implement this JWT authentication in our application you got some better idea still we have one small issue so let me explain it we already provided our expiration time is just 20 seconds so let me show you here just 20 seconds we almost crossed 20 seconds still i am trying to run this request we provided the same token only that means the token already it's expired still it's working why because this validation parameters so let me show you yeah this token validation parameter we have one more parameter is called clack chow so in case if you are providing uh, the expiration time is less than five minutes the clack chow value should be taken so the clack chow default value is five minutes so if you in some cases uh, you actually have the expiration time is less than five minutes so in that scenarios you should make this clacture value should be zero for doing this one just a time span dot zero that's it okay we have done so let me verify once again
okay application in running mode so let me try to access the same request okay it's for not one unauthorized error so let me generate the token once again okay the token got generated our expiration time cards also started I think almost we 5 to 10 seconds covered okay see we got the value so we can wait just 20 seconds now I am just accessing it so see we are getting this 401 unauthorized error so this is all about this JWT authentication still if you have any doubts or clarifications please post in the comment box and also please don't forget to subscribe my channel in my next video I am going to cover this role based authentication and also this refresh token concept thank you thanks for watching